Good morning and welcome to Palm Sunday Worship here at Pendleton Center and First Niagara Falls United Methodist Churches. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. And be glad in it. And be glad in it. This, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us pray. Holy God, a Redeemer and King, all glory, laud, and honor is given to you with songs of praise and shouts of Hosanna. As we open our hearts to you, fill us with your Spirit, cover us by your grace, and unify us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, even though you're at home, I'd like to invite y'all to stand if you're able as we sing together all glory, laud, and honor. with you. Please be seated. We are so glad that you are here worshiping with us this morning on Palm Sunday, and we just wanted to draw your attention to a few things. First of all, there is an online friendship card, so I encourage you to click on that link and fill it out so we know who's worshiping along with us. And if you have any prayer concerns or if you have any praises where you want to shout out a praise, a blessing of what God has done in your life, put that on the friendship card as well, and we can pray over them and rejoice with you in all of the blessings. 
blessings. Also, there's a link for children's activity page. So if you have children with you, you can download that. Just like when they come to worship and they get the clipboard and they can color and such, that is available too. So you can see the links for those, and those are an opportunity to engage. Um, we did want to also mention that we have opportunities for engagement through our Facebook group. So you can join PCUMC Fellowship Group, and that is a group of people that are gathering together and they're giving each other support and encouragement. There's evening devotions and prayer, and there's Bible studies, and it's just a wonderful way to keep connected with one another. I also want to let you know that for the most part, there's nothing going on as because we want to follow all the rules, right? We want to make sure that we're doing all the social distancing. We do have a couple of things that are happening, though. The, the dinner in Niagara Falls is happening um, on Thursday night. So if you know of anybody in need, that dinner is happening on Thursday nights. It's being done in a very safe way and, and following all the rules. Um, but we want to make sure we take care of people. And in that same venue, we also have the dinner that goes out for the homeless in the city of Buffalo. That is also happening. But again, check with Sandy on that because in following the rules for both of those ministries, we have just a very small amount of people who are working with that so that we can make sure we're maintaining the social distancing. So I just want to encourage you in this moment to think about how God has blessed you. God is moving, even though this seems crazy, even though some of us are like really like going a little stir crazy, we are being blessed. God is moving in some way in all of our lives. And so I encourage you to open up our eyes, open up our ears, open up our hearts and souls to actually notice what God is doing in our lives and rejoice in the many blessings the many blessings that God is giving to us. And so we have an offering, a time where we give back to God as a way of expressing our gratitude to God. So at this time, we're going to hear a song by Sue Sayowitz. It's a tradition in our church, the Holy City, and she plays it on the organ every year, and it's a wonderful blessing to us all.
us pray for our offering. Lord, thank you for this opportunity that we have to have a church, Lord God, that we can give to. Thank you for the finances that you have provided for them. And Lord, I pray that you would give us an extra special portion. And right now there's people that can't give because of their own financial struggles. Lord, I pray that you would bless them. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to be able to be a blessing to them. But Lord, I pray for this gift of the tithes and offerings that have been prepared for you. It's a little different than normally we do give, but Lord, we know that you bless. And I pray that this church would be a blessing and this offering would be a blessing in your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. to the King of Kings, Hosanna to King David, Hosanna to the King who sits upon the throne. Hi, hi Junior Church. I'm excited because today is Palm Sunday and on Palm Sunday we remember the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey and all of the people got so excited that they waved palm branches and they threw all of their cloaks down on the ground so that Jesus' donkey wouldn't have to ride in the mud. This was a very special time that Jesus was going into um, Jerusalem because he was going into Jerusalem knowing that he was going to die on the cross eventually, later on in that same week. But he went to Jerusalem anyway. Do you know why? He went to Jerusalem because he loves us so much. And we remember what he did when we wave our palm branches on Palm Sunday, and then we go through the rest of the week and remember everything that he did when we come to the day when Easter Sunday happens. And I remember getting palm branches here at church every single year. They don't always look like this. This has got lots of palm leaves on it, doesn't it? It does, it has lots of palm leaves. Um, sometimes when we're in church, they just give us like one of them and it's a real, real long one. And then some people know how to turn those palm, um, those palm leaves into a cross and they fold it up in a special way. And someone gave me this last year because they made it out of their palm branch. Did you ever have someone take a palm branch and make a cross for you out of it? I hope you did. And next year, when we're all together, we're going to make palm branches. We're going to take our palms and wave them, and we're going to make palm crosses again. Maybe you'll be able to make something like a palm cross. When our palm cross is in our room or it's um, in our book, like sometimes I use my palm cross as a bookmark for my Bible so I can remember where I've been reading. And that reminds us of why Jesus went into Jerusalem that day when the people waved their palms, why he died on the cross, because he loved us to save us from our sins. Now, Jesus loves us so much that he saved us from our sins. And we want to share God's love with everybody, right? Yeah, I know you know what's coming next. Get down on the floor. And we're going to say God's love fills us up and fills us up and fills us up and fills us up until we overflow. Yes, that's right. Do it one more time with me. Ready? God fills us up and fills us up and fills us up and fills us up until we overflow. That's right. And then we can say, if you make your heart with me, can you make a heart? Yep, don't forget how. When God's love is in my heart, I can love everybody. That's right. Let's do it one more time all together. When God's love is in my heart, I can love everybody. That's wonderful. I know that you remember the verse that we were talking about a long, a few weeks ago. It was a few weeks ago, and it's from Psalm 107. It says, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Can you say that with me? Let's try. Ready? 
give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. That's right. And I know you want to be thankful to the Lord. And I bet you can think of lots of things that you're thankful for. So now we're going to sing that song all about how we want to be thankful and grateful for everything God has done, for who God is in our lives. We're going to be so, so excited. And we're going to wave our palm branches. Are you ready? Are you ready to sing the song about being thankful? All right. is going on too and it's an ongoing prayer vigil that we want you to participate in during this time lots of folks are in need of prayer your family your neighborhood our community and our whole world Marilyn Barney a member of our prayer team shared this prayer prompt for our prayers for this week it comes from Isaiah chapter 12 verse 2 surely God is my salvation I will trust and not be afraid the Lord the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. And Marilyn points out that God is always with us. God is our strength. And we rejoice in knowing that God is with us. God is our song. God is a very, very present help in our lives. So pray this week that we may all live in trusting in God in that way and take time this week for praise and for thanksgiving. Please let us know that you're praying. Let us know what time, let us know what day. You can tell us that on the friendship card in the notes. And now, as we move into our prayer requests, I want to let, us know, let everyone know that um, we have a couple of people in the hospital. Um, we have Patrick Hahn, who is in ICU at Buffalo General, and Sean Mahalski's dad, um, Leanne's um, husband. And there, of course, their families are all very concerned that they can't go in and visit. It's a hard time for us all when we can't go visit loved ones in the hospital. So we want to keep them lifted up, along with folks, um, our families who are dealing directly with the virus and with other issues yeah. of health. And we want to bring the sad news and pray for the families of Julie Maciejewski, whose husband, Mike, passed away this week, and for the family of Ursula Morrison, who passed away this week as well. 
We've had some other concerns raised within our church family just within the past couple of days. Please pray for Irene Tate. She was in the hospital. She's been discharged but continues to have serious health issues. Also pray for Carmen Falbo and for his wife Gloria. Carmen has been admitted to the hospital with critical health issues. Uh, we do have some praises. Patrick Hahn is actually home now, but he's got a long road of recovery ahead of him. So continue to lift up Patrick in your prayers. And Judy Snow's son, son Sean, is doing well, and uh, she's back home here with us. As we consider these needs that have been brought to us and those needs that are on your heart, let's turn to the Lord in prayer. our gracious God of all creation. You are always with us. You are always willing to hear and to answer our prayers. At this time, Lord God, we are concerned for many things. There are folks, Lord God, who, who are sick, who are in need of a healing touch from you. There are folks, Lord God, who are grieving losses of all kinds. Lord, we bring them to you. We come to you with our hearts full of love for them, full of concern, and we ask that you would touch them. Bring wisdom to doctors and nurses and healthcare uh, workers of all kinds. Let them know what to do, how to care well for those people who are in need of a healing touch. Bring them your healing power, Lord God. Bring comfort to families who cannot visit their loved ones and to those who cannot be visited. Let them know, Lord God, that you are with all of them that you have put your love in their hearts in such a measure that even though there is a physical distance between us, there is no distance in love. We pray also, Lord God, for those who are in a state of grief over those loved ones who have passed on. Comfort them, Lord God, by your spirit. Draw them near to yourself. Give them the hope of eternal life that is in you. Let them know that you have got their loved ones, that you love and care for them deeply. And Father, we pray now in Jesus' name for our ongoing situation that is so frustrating and is so troublesome to us. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name that you will deliver us quickly from the effects of this virus in our land, in our world, in our communities, in our homes. We pray in Jesus' name that you would continue to provide all that we need, that you would protect those who are unable to be at work, Lord God, that you would hold up and protect those who are necessary workers, who are caring for all kinds of folks, first responders and healthcare workers, Lord, all of those people who have to be out on the front lines risking exposure. And we just pray in Jesus' name that you would grant all of your people wisdom to care for one another in ways that we have not had to care for one another before. Help us, Lord. Protect us, protect our children, protect our elderly loved ones, protect all those that we care for. Be with us, Lord God. And now, Lord, we, we just lift up the prayer that Jesus taught us because it is the prayer he gave us when his disciples asked him, teach us, Lord, teach us to pray. And so we say, a phrase at a time, 
for all of those folks who don't know the prayer well and for those who are learning it, especially our youngest members. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, Lord, we just lift up Pastor Tom as he brings this message to us. We come to hear from your word and to be blessed by hearing from you. Lord, we pray that all of our worship would be a blessing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we hear from the word of the Lord? The scripture reading today is Matthew 21, verses 1 through 16. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to David, the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Did you hear what these children are saying, they asked him? Yes, Jesus replied. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants? You, Lord, have called forth your praise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Dan. A parade. A great gathering of people, so yesterday. We don't do that much anymore, do we? That would be wrong, to gather together to celebrate God. Or is it that we have lack of faith in God and we don't trust God to protect us? Can we celebrate Palm Sunday without a crowd? Early in their service, you saw an image of the children coming into the sanctuary with Jesus. Now, you know that was from last year. Because we're physically distancing from each other. Because, to be honest, we have a fear. When I was young, we had a big fear. We were taken out in the hallways and lined up against our lockers as the teachers would go down through the hallways making sounds like bombs dropping. Sometimes we'd actually, when we were little, we would crawl under our desk, duck and cover, they called it, because 
we were afraid a nuclear bomb was going to be dropped on our head. We really honestly believed it. We saw it everywhere. Then when I was an adult, we saw the Berlin Wall come crumbling down and our fears melted away. We won. So we said, let the good times roll. I got to tell you, we were little kids out in the hallway. We were praying to God. Dear God, don't let this be the day that the real bomb is dropping. But we don't need to pray to God when we don't have any problems, right? There's no bombs coming. We're okay. Don't need God anymore. We have other things. Things that in some ways are an illusion of power, but we give our confidence to it. They seem strong. The government, an, an army, a mighty church, our boss. People who have a lot of money. Hmm. They talk sometimes about what are called estates. It began in the Middle Ages when they were talking about the three estates, which were the clergy, the nobility, and the people. The three sources of power, if you will, in that culture, in our culture, we, we have the church still. We have the government. We have big business. We have the schools and the academies and the universities. We have the media. Sometimes they call themselves the fourth or fifth estate. We have the military. They seem so powerful. Yet all their power doesn't seem to be able to stop this little invisible virus spreading through our culture. Not blaming anyone. Just recognizing that sometimes what we think is so powerful can actually be so impotent in our culture. In First Chronicles, it says to us, For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Everything but God is simply an illusion. Jesus talks about the robbers, the thieves in the temple that were changing money. What they would do was very simple. Is, is they would, people would come from around the world, and in the temple they had special coins that could only be used in the temple that looked different from everything else. And so unless you had those coins, you couldn't do anything. You couldn't make your offering. You couldn't purchase a sacrifice. You had to have those special coins. So they charged this, this interest, this exchange rate that was, was outrageous. And they charged it to everybody. It wasn't just that they were taking money from the rich or taking it from the poor, which it says that Jesus went in and he turned over the table of the money changers. And he took the place where they were selling doves and tossed it apart. Why doves? Because doves were the offering of the poorest of the poor. And somehow these people thought it was okay to take advantage of people's faith, their religion, their faith in God, and their need for this little dove to overcharge them to say their doves were not worthy enough to steal from them. And worst of all, to steal from them in the name of God. So Jesus turned everything upside down, kind of like the virus has turned our lives upside down. Jerusalem was the capital of that region. It was the capital of the political establishment where King Herod had his palace. It was, it was the place the Romans had a palace with, with Pontius Pilate. It was the place where the high priest had the temple. It was the capital of power. And Jesus, it says in here, in verse 11, is a prophet. A prophet of God. And Jesus comes into the capital and in that short little passage we have here, God is making his claim on all the power of the earth. He is saying that he is more powerful, he is more important, he takes precedence over everything, all of those things, whether it be the government or the business or the military or the schools or anything, even the religious organizations. Jesus tears down the political power, the economic power, the religious power, because he's God. 
Our God is too small. Our God is too small. We simply don't recognize how much power he has. We relegate God to corners of our life and then bow down to the idols of the nations that we have made. Oh, the politician seems so strong. Oh, we're afraid of the military or the police. Oh, we're worried about those who have money. Oh, we're concerned about what will they say about us in the media. Or can we be a star? But whereas God, God's a corner. I like to think of it as a pie. We have a, we have a circle of life. And each corner of our lives, people think of as a piece of that pie. Our family, our work, our politics, our social activities. Even our church has a piece of the pie. And we think of God as being a piece of that pie. We give him, we give him some time. We, we give him space. He has a piece. For some, it's even a fairly large piece. But you see, God doesn't see himself as a piece of the pie. He sees himself as the whole pie. He's the boundary of the whole thing. He holds the universe in his hands. They sang Hosanna. Hosanna, which means God saves us. And Christians know that our lives are in the hands of a living God who made heavens and earth. So he overcomes sickness. He drives out demons. He is the power of power. He is the king of kings. And that's what we proclaim on Palm Sunday. There's a parable in the Bible. We've been using parables as we talk about kingdom living. And this is a very, very short parable. It talks about how Jesus at one time was accused by the religious leaders of casting out demons in the name of Satan. So the parable is this. It's, it's actually a very simple little story. It says that there was a powerful man, a strong man, which represents Satan. And it says that if you want to go into the strong man's house and take their possessions first, you have to bind up the strong man. Because you can't take the possessions of the strong man until they're bound up. And what the meaning of this is, is that Satan has been given authority over some things in this world. And Satan uses fear and brokenness and pain and worry. And all these kind of things to hold us. But if we want to take them back from Satan so that he doesn't possess us, through the power of God, we bind up Satan. We bind up the powers of evil. We bind up the fear. We bind up the, the idolatry. We bind it all up and we can live because God is the power to overcome. Our God is too small. We see God as almost our servant that we give a little bit of time to when we feel like it. We pay, play lip service to him when he deserves so much more. So he speaks about it as children would speak about it. They were cheering him, the children, saying wonderful praises about him and, and, and shouting in the temple courts. Hosanna to the son of David. And the leaders were indignant. Do you hear what the children are saying about you? And he says, haven't you ever read from the lips of children and infants? You, Lord, have called forth your praise. Sometimes we have to remember that compared to God, we are, we are not even little children. We are, we are less than little children. But if we would have the attitude towards our heavenly Father that he is there for us, that our God is huge, bigger than a, 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 a grown parent is to a little tiny child, and we realize that we're dependent on our heavenly Father, we will have the victory of God. We will remain frightened until we accept the power that holds all creation, that holds all eternity as the guiding force of our lives. I'm not afraid of the coronavirus. 
I don't want you to misunderstand. I'm not foolish. I'm not going out and trying to look for it. I don't want it, and I don't want you to get it, and I don't want other people to get it either. So we didn't have a parade and a gathering here at church today. But I'm not afraid of it because I know who holds my life and I know who holds my eternal destiny. Our God is too small. But on top of that, our God comes in such unexpected ways, kind of like this. Your sword was stolen, Kay. But here's Excalibur. Oh, has drawn the sword. Kay, did you free Excalibur from the stone? Yes. No, I didn't. Arthur did. The sword! The sword! You freed it, Arthur? I did, Father. I beg your forgiveness. You must put it back! The sword is The sword! The sword! The sword! Now, try to draw it again, Arthur. I love the line where he says, put it back. <laughs> put it back. The reason I chose this clip is because it was the only one I could find about King Arthur pulling the sword from the stone where King Arthur didn't look like some hulky, muscular, strong and powerful hero kind of guy. He looks like, well, like he doesn't belong being king. But he pulled the sword from the stone because he was the one chosen to be king. The difficulty we sometimes have is that our God is too small, but sometimes we feel that the God we talk about as being so powerful appears too small, moves too slow, doesn't seem to care, is weak, not a, not a God that we would want to stake our lives on. Not a God with power. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. I want you to think about that. Have you ever ridden on a donkey? I've ridden on a donkey. They are uncomfortable. They are weird. They're kind of strange looking. And they certainly don't look noble. He didn't ride in on a horse or an elephant or a camel or something like that. He rode in on a donkey. Now, all the movies show the great kings, they all ride in on white horses with the sword high, right? Jesus rides in on a donkey and talks about being like a little child. Simplicity. Humility. Not prestige. Jesus didn't come to Jerusalem because he wanted to show how powerful he was. He came to Jerusalem because he wanted to connect with the people that were his people. He didn't bring a sword. He didn't bring an army. Because he knew the power is not something that comes from outside us, it comes from within us. In the book of 1 John, it says, you, dear children, are from God. And have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. We have the power to overcome demons, to overcome fear, to overcome the dangers of the world because God is with us. God is within us. But you notice he calls us dear children. 
Well, I'm not a child. <laughs> they start saying that when they're, what, about three or four? By the time you get to be a teenager, I'm, I'm an adult. And when we get to be around my age, we keep saying to our children, stop treating us like children. <laughs> but God sees us as his children. A good king sees the people that serve him, that follow him, as his responsibility that he serves. Sometimes we just misunderstand that because we're so impressed with the power that we see around us. Do you know what the sword was used for? The sword was used by the king to protect his subjects, the people of his kingdom. Rarely was a sword used on people within the kingdom because they didn't need to do that. The people in the kingdom were working with the king. And if they did use it within the kingdom, it was to protect the people in the kingdom from people who were abusive. The sword of the king exists to protect, not to hurt, not to show great and incredible prestige and power. but to help those who are weak. Hosanna. God saves us. We follow God. Not just for our good, but for the good of the kingdom. It's, it's really fun in this story that in verse 14 and 15, Jesus actually is in the middle of a conversation uh, with people all around him, big crowd. He's got the religious leaders there and everything else. And he stops, it says, and the blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. He just stops. Well, let's take a pause from the big parade because there's somebody over here who's hurting. Let's stop the, the, the general procession because I need to take care of this person along the sidelines here, like a general who's leading the charge in, in, into battle. But they say, wait a minute, one of our soldiers is hurt and stops. Now, that wouldn't be practical from a military perspective, but it's wonderful from a perspective of seeing our leaders who care. God cares. He takes care of the weak, the sick. The king actually made provisions for the poorest to help them and love them. And in this case, the leaders, they get jealous. They're upset. How could you treat us with such indignation? We are the leaders of the nation. Palm Sunday is also the Passion Sunday. It's a Sunday where we look forward to Easter, but first we have to see the cross on the way. Now, we will have Good Friday service this week. We encourage and invite you to come and attend that as well. Because we don't really understand the resurrection until we understand the cross. But we call this Passion Sunday because some people don't make Good Friday. It's easier for you this year. Come and join us. Passion Sunday is, is the time when we remember our mortality. And the goal of this life is to get to the next that we want to be on the right side of eternity. We want to be citizens. We want to be members of the kingdom of heaven. The people shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We use that every week when we celebrate communion, right? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they're referring to Jesus here, and that's why we use that in communion. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But it's also about us. If we come in the name of the Lord, we will be blessed. We will find joy and happiness even in the midst of brokenness. We will find healing even in the midst of suffering and pain. We will find hope even in the midst of despair. We will find courage when everyone else is feeling afraid. But we need to come in the name of the Lord. Because kingdom living is a partnership. You cannot have a king without anybody in the kingdom. And if the people have no one leading them, they wander aimlessly. 
It's a partnership between the king and the people. Hosanna, God saves. And next week we'll be proclaiming hallelujah. God is to be praised. And so interestingly, if you read this, the people are honoring Jesus. They're, they're putting their coats and they're putting palm uh, leaves down on the ground so that even the feet of the donkey don't touch the earth as a shine, sign of respect. They put, they put their coats over the donkey so Jesus isn't actually sitting on the donkey, sitting on the coats. Because they love him. They're honoring him. Because they love their king. As we're supposed to love our king as well. It, it's an understanding we just don't have in our, our Western democracy. We look for every reason we can to criticize our leaders. We, we, we look at how, to, how to, to somehow bring people that are powerful down from their perch. To equalize them. Make, make it more democratic so everybody's kind of even. In a democracy, that may even be the right thing. But in, in a kingdom, the whole idea is to lift our king up. To, to make our king look better. To talk about how wonderful our king is. Because as our king succeeds, so do we succeed. So they praise him. And interestingly, it says that the praise of children is better than the praise of adults. And I, I have to kind of agree with that. You see, because children haven't learned to restrain themselves yet. Have you ever noticed that? Even in the midst of a worship service, you'll, you'll hear a child cry out. Now, we, we think they're crying, but they're crying out. We see children that, that make noises or say things at the wrong time because they haven't learned how to properly restrain themselves. And so they'll, they'll say, hallelujah, because they don't understand they're not supposed to anymore. <laughs> We've learned how to restrain ourselves from being what God wants us to be. Attend VBS sometime. Amazing scene. Our entire sanctuary filled with children and young people. And they're not just worshiping God like we do in our nice, solemn, proper way, listening to what people do and making sure we don't sing off key. They are shouting and singing and jumping and praising God. So filled with excitement that the power of it is hard for you to even imagine what it's like to be leading a group of people that are so excited about God. It affects even the person leading. Just as our worship of God affects our king. They love the king. And the king honors them with a parade, not to show his power, but to show his love. We think of parades, and we've got these crazy ideas that parades are about tanks and missiles and, and showing just how powerful we are. Maybe we'll have some jets fly over top. We used to have a parade out in Wyoming County. When my wife and I went to it the first time, we were like from, you know, from this urban area. We were kind of like, what the heck is this? They're showing farm vehicles and trucks and regular kind of vehicles that we wouldn't associate with a parade. But they were just proud of what each other do to make the kingdom, that community, work. That's what a kingdom is about. They love the king, and the king loves them. First John, in chapter 4, also says to us, and you know this verse, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Remember the sword the purpose of the sword is to punish those who are doing evil to our brothers and sisters or to protect those who would be harmed by someone who wants to do something nefarious to hurt our brothers and sisters. That's the purpose of the sword, not to oppress, but to protect and liberate and release and the best of kings, the best of leaders, know that that's the purpose of why God gave them a sword. i got to put this thing down. I'm going gonna, gonna to hit myself with it. Providence is a very strange thing. And I need to speak to that before we close today. It says 
in verse 4 that this whole thing took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, and the fowl of a donkey. This was all predicted. This was all determined by God beforehand. In fact, even the, the use of the donkey, they said, go into the city and tell the people to let you have the donkey that was prepared for this. It's, it's all set up, preordained. Sometimes I hear that from people. It doesn't really matter what we do because God has already made a decision about what will happen, what will happen with my life, what will happen with this world, what will happen with all of creation, and, and there's nothing we can do about it. We just have to wait for what God has already decided in our life. This virus, a lot of people don't like hearing it this way, but this virus is nature's way of weeding out the weak. That's what nature does. Nature figures out ways to test a species, whether it be us or any other species, to take those who are weak and lessen them and those who are strong and make them more. That makes a species stronger over the course of years and over the course of centuries. And so some people think viruses are inevitable. There's nothing we can do. And yet Genesis tells us that we are supposed to subdue or rule over creation for the better good. We're supposed to do our part. Remember, a kingdom is a partnership between the king and the people of the kingdom. We aren't supposed to just let things happen however they might occur. We're supposed to help the kingdom meet the kingdom's goals. A parade is so yesterday. Gather and celebrate God together. Is it that we lack faith that we don't fill this room with people gathering together to show that they trust God? No, it's because we believe that we can help you not to get sick. Hello. Right? Because we believe that there are things we can do to change the course of our culture, our nation, even our creation itself because God made us to do that he made us to participate in the dominion of this world he made it's not a lack of faith it's love of neighbor when you get together with people and take the chance of sharing with them something that could literally kill them you're not showing how brave you are you're you're, you're showing that you're not concerned about your neighbor. I'm not afraid of the coronavirus. I'm really not. I have made my peace with God a long time ago. But I know there are people in this world that look to me and depend on me right now, and I need to be here. And, and, and I know that it isn't going to help if I go around trying to figure out how I can get myself in the middle of situations where I'll catch the coronavirus so I can give it to all of you. That's not courage. That shows a lack of love for our neighbors. So we will celebrate Palm Sunday without a crowd. But I don't think that gathering for the parade was the whole point anyways. In, in the book of Luke, in chapter 17, it says, Once on being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, The coming of the kingdom of God is not something can be observed. Nor will people say, here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is within you, within our hearts. It's not the parade. It's not the gathering. It's not the power of the nations or the military or, or, or the business or the church. It's not this wonderful building we have. It's not any of us. It's not Pastor Tom. The kingdom of God is when we take God himself into our heart and stop focusing our lives around idols of our own creation that only have an illusion of power 
when God offers us genuine, life-transforming, heart-changing, hope-giving, eternity-promised power, love, and life. The kingdom of God is yours today. I invite you to join me in prayer as we turn our hearts to receive God's kingdom. Dear God in heaven, I sometimes fail to live to the kingdom's goals, the kingdom's behaviors, the kingdom's hopes, the kingdom's promise. Change my heart, Lord. Cause me to repent, to turn towards you. Forgive my sin. Make me a part of a generation that lives for you and honors you now and into eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, God, God has been looking for you to be a part of his kingdom all of your life. And the kingdom of God isn't something we have to go and find ourselves physically in. God will put it in your heart. Today, today he makes a promise to you that any brokenness in your life will be removed. Any demons will be cast out. Any powers that have been controlling you or fears that have been dominating you can be removed. And the brokenness of your life will not be remembered any longer. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Glory to God. Hosanna. Amen.
face the day. In your Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is always right and a good thing to give thanks to God. Even in the midst of a crisis, God is with us. Through the course of our service today, we heard about people in our congregation that are struggling. We've heard about people who face difficulties and about how Jesus faced difficulties. And we're going into Holy Week where we'll see the passion of Christ. Even in the midst of struggles, God is with us to take us through the shadowy valleys to the blessing that he offers to us. So we come and we respond to God. Some of us bring our gifts to God and we appreciate that we're using those to help people in this ministry and outside this ministry. God is blessing us so that we can be a help to other people and you can be a help too. I know it's hard because you can't come to the church to specifically do the things that we normally do to give up our time and effort, but we can do things still to be a blessing for God. Right now, there's a lot of people who are getting a little well, I'm just say squirrely from sitting in their houses all the time. They could use a call. Maybe it's a, a child or a teenager or, or an, an older person or just anybody. We all like to hear. I got a card the other day from somebody who just said they had time to write a card. I don't know if I've ever gotten a card from him. It was, it was so nice. It lit up our day. We can send out a note. We can, we can wave to the people across the street. You can turn on a light. You can find out a way to reach out with God. I'll give you a couple examples I read about and I saw this week. I, I read about a fellow in the newspaper who decided to just start paying for the groceries of people in a poor neighborhood. So he went into the store and he just told them, just let the register run. And he paid for about 30 people's groceries. Maybe you could do that. Maybe you can't. Maybe you could do it for one. I think that person would feel their day has been lit up. Some people are turning on their lights. They put a teddy bear 
in their window. We have one in the front of our church because the kids are going on a teddy bear scavenger hunt and looking for those teddy bears. I know of a woman who took a couple dolls that she's owned for years. She sanitized them, sprayed them all down with Lysol, and gave them to the kids next door. They went to bed sleeping with those, feeling like they were safer now in the midst of this issue. What could you do? You can do things to brighten up people's life today, right here and right now. I'll give you something else that I think you could do. I think you could come to the church on your own, just your family, and if you'd like to, you can make a little chalk drawing in one of our parking lots. Now, I don't want to have a whole lot of people here. We're not doing that. We're not gathering in the church parking lot. We're keeping the, the rules about safe distance, but you can look, and there's no one here. It's a quiet day, or you're at one end of the parking lot, and somebody's at the other, and you want a little drawing to praise God. We'll make some drawings in our parking lots for Easter just to celebrate the blessings God is giving to us. There are so many ways we can bless God. Some are making face masks for people who need it because they can sew. You find what God is calling you to do and lift up the praise of God to everyone. Shall we return our blessing to the God who's given us so much by praying the prayer that Jesus taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may God carry you through this light week. May God take you through the holiest of weeks of all, holding you close to him, taking away your fears, driving out your demons, giving you the power to claim the kingdom in this life and in the kingdom to come. Go in his peace, and may God be with you now and forever. Amen.